Coleman in the morning. Common Sense Radio. Coming up, Nickelback and Daughtry tickets. Inside my heart, there's an empty name. Genevieve Wood, too. A heavy hate on a hollow chain. And Kevin Jackson, so Weber's so World. And we follow up on this situation that happened not only in New City, but happening around the country. And how it fits into the current political climate right now. The fears of rampant anti-Semitism. We'll talk about that. Now in the meantime, choose to perish or to learn. Pamela Geller at the Shrugs. Welcome to the program. And boy, this Farrakhan speech, interestingly enough, didn't really get a whole lot of coverage. I wonder why. Of course not. <laughs> Of course, uh, his Jew-hating al Akbar speech doesn't get any uh, any media coverage because uh, they're aligned with the jihad force and they're too busy attacking Trump's truth. I mean, you see, this is I've spent days on this with other media. Um, the, uh, Swed- the the Swedish uh, narrative that is now being imposed by uh, everyone. Uh, in big media, it's it's striking. It's striking, of course, to me. Uh, and we can talk about Farrakhan, but this is I, I I mean this is again one of those tipping point moments. I mean I literally have at the Geller Report a uh, category called Jihad in Sweden. I mean that's how often that I, I am writing up the the. the Daily, sometimes, always weekly, arson attacks by these Muslim mobs. Um, the, the the rape epidemic, making it uh, the rape capital uh, of Europe. I mean, it's it's striking, and of course the no-go zones, you know, uh, and which are uh, which are spreading. And the idea that President Trump pointed that out when warning of some of the disastrous consequences of mass immigration from these hotbeds of terrorism and that he should be attacked, it's, again, further proof of the enemy's war on the truth and the disarming of the American people in what will be and what is, I think, the gravest threat to our freedom. I mean, you know, it's... the media is actively lying to the public to keep them ignorant about what's happening. And, you know, uh, their swarm around this is further proof of that. And to, to the Swedish government and the media pretending that all is well in Sweden, where just weeks ago, Jamie, MPs in Sweden were calling for billions for the police to fight the migrant crime epidemic. And, by the way, a government agency admitted there were no uh, it admitted there were 50 no-go zones. Yeah, the National Criminal Investigation Service was forced to admit more than 50 areas in Sweden were labeled no-go yeah, zones. And, you know, Pam, and then that's why it was so frustrating, even when Tucker Carlson tried to get to the bottom of this with some folks who were representing, I guess, the other side of the story. And they just all but essentially tried to mush their way through it and lied and said, well, the reporting standards are different. And some people might have had memories of being attacked maybe 10 years ago. And now oh, just yeah. reporting. It's like, it's such BS. Yeah, that, that was hysterical. Forced memories. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, first of all, I wanted to say a couple things because I tweeted it uh, Tucker last night. I said, I'm, I love you, man, but please, can you have someone on uh, who right. actually knows about jihad, um, and migration, and, and crime? Uh, I love Tucker. He gives these idiots too long, I'm sorry, too long to, to spout their, their, their manure. And he doesn't have, and he's a very smart guy and he knows a lot, but you can't know everything and you should really have someone on who's an expert on the other side. Not just the quote unquote left experts, but he needs also, he, I'm not saying he's not smart. I am saying that he doesn't know everything. And in, with things like this, you need to kill him with, with facts. You know, you've got to tell the story. Uh, the former deputy chief of the Serious Crimes Division said, uh, in regards to the migration, our pensioners are on their knees, the schools are a mess, healthcare is an inferno, inferno. the police are completely destroyed. Everyone knows why, but no one dares or wants to say why. 
I mean, police have been forced, Jamie, to take extraordinary measures to cope with the, the, this, this wild spike in, in migrant cr- crime. Shoppers can't go to the grocery store. Nordstrand, uh, Sweden's largest shopping center, has been taken over by these Muslim g- gangs. It's, it's unbelievable, like, the dichotomy between the truth, between right, reality, and their narrative. Yeah. The gap couldn't be greater, and of course, that's why everything you're seeing, and apart from what's happening, is so completely diverse and different that something terrible is going to happen. And was going to be like, you know, how did that happen? I don't understand. Everything was great in Sweden. It was perfect. You know, it's like a lovely place. I mean, that's the stage that we're getting at. It, you cannot even speak of it in Sweden without risking jail. And now you see in Canada, they want to, they want to impose the same Sharia laws, where if you, if you criticize or insult Islam, it, it, it'll be a criminal offense. That is the Sharia. Anyone that tells you differently is either clueless or complicit. Because, first of all, we're not a Muslim country. We don't live under the Sharia. I, I mean, look, I'm, we may not like it if someone on, you know, um, uh, Comedy Central, let's say, makes fun of Jesus Christ, but nobody goes around killing people. Right. And there are no laws that say you cannot do that. But there are laws being imposed across the West, and we see Canada legislation, the bill is 103. That is Sharia. That is Islamic law. You cannot criticize Islam, and if you do, it is, uh, it, you know, it, you, will, you will go to jail. And this is what we're seeing. You leave, uh, you know, bacon on the door handle of a, mo- a mosque in the U.K., you go to jail. Meanwhile, on a regular basis here in America, for example, uh, Jewish uh, community sentence centers and shuls, synagogues, are getting weekly bomb threats. Nobody talks about that. Right. right. Nobody talks about that. I'll never forget when right after Egypt uh, turned over and they were just out, out and out just burning Coptic churches. Those were people that the Obama administration supported. And, and they're burning these churches and everything else and not a peep. It's amazing. Yeah, exactly. And the same Christians, the Assyrians, the Christians in, in, in Syria, I mean, it's just complete silence. So when Farrakhan has a Jew-hating rally screaming Alu Akbar, you expect coverage of it. Well, you absolutely do. And there was some word, and I can't nail this down. Was Keith Ellison there? Um, I don't know, okay. but I certainly would not be surprised. Hakeem Muhammad, that's his name, you know. That's just so that you know. And he is, you know, this is a congressman who went to Saudi Arabia on the Hajj, on his pilgrimage, paid for by the Muslim Brotherhood. He has led Hamas rallies against the Jewish state of Israel. I would really be surprised if he wasn't there. But I can't commit because I don't know for sure. The new possible head of the Democratic Party. Let's hope for it. (laughs) I'm just saying. Hey, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pamela Geller, always great to talk to you. The Geller Report, atlasshrugs.com. We appreciate you, as always, my dear. Hey, thanks for having me, Jamie. Take care. Bye-bye.